Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Joel McRae in A.B. Guthrie's The Way West on the Hallmark Playhouse. Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present the first performance on the air of a very fine novel by A.B. Guthrie entitled The Way West. A very fine novel indeed, I'd call it. Quite one of the best I read last year. Not only enthralling, but giving new insight into that vast and still unfinished drama of America which we ourselves are part of. Mr. Guthrie begins his story in Independence, Missouri, a town famous for a number of reasons. And the period he writes of is a century ago when the way west and the Oregon Trail were hard ways for adventurous men. For the leading part in our sterling drama, that distinguished actor, Mr. Joel McRae, is with us tonight. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of The Way West. There are Hallmark Cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, there is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting A.B. Guthrie's The Way West, starring Joel McRae. <laughs> I'll go to town. To talk about Oregon, Lars? Well, I reckon now's as good as any time to, to say it. Becky, we're going to Oregon. <gasps> what? You and Brownie and me. Lars! I ain't satisfied to work here on the farm in Missouri and keep myself up so as I can work some more. There ought to be more to living than that. Well, I never figured you for lazy. Maybe I'm not. Becky, there just ain't enough range here. We're wasting time. This is 1845. There's a future for us in Oregon. Future? Oh, but Lige, this farm, this house, well, we put every stick and splinter into it. We, we prettied up the place together. Everything here means something to us. Brownie was born here. We have our roots here. Our roots aren't so deep, Becky. We're still young. We have a whole lifetime ahead of us. This is a good house, all right, but... We'll build a finer one. And we've got to think about Brownie, too. He ain't a boy no more. He's most 17. I'd like for him to know something besides root hog or die. I want him to have room to grow into a man. Good, fertile earth to farm. Don't you see, Becky? How can you tell what there is in Oregon? How do you know it'll be any better than here? Well, Dick Summers knows he's been there. And he's going to guide us there. He knows the way, every inch of it. And we've elected a good captain. Irvin Tadlock. He's got more learning than the rest of us. You're bound and determined to go, aren't you, Lige? That's the way it has to be for all of us. And there's something else. All that wonderful land in Oregon. If we don't hurry up and take it, England will. They keep telling us, 54-40 or fight. But we won't have to fight if there are enough of us there on the ground. Oh, it'd be a proud thing, Becky, for Brownie to say to his young'uns, my folks helped win this country. We wouldn't want to sit in a chair and let other folks make history, would we? Oh, you're bunching up on me, Lyle. I know that, Becky. But I'm asking you to put up with it and me. It ain't going to be easy. The going's going to be mighty rough. But this is my dream. And I ain't going to rest till I make it come true. Lige Evans, you're my husband and I love you. Any dream of yours is my dream, too. 
departure in April 1845 dawned clear, and a hundred odd men, women and children gathered at a rendezvous outside of Independence, Missouri, in their big, high-wheeled wagons, piled high with their belongings. And their stock, their cattle, their cows were in the rear of the train. Solid, established folk, they were leaving behind farms and businesses because they shared a dream about the rich land of the West. And their eyes turned irrevocably towards the western horizon and their goal. The Willamette Valley in Oregon. And the trek began. Yaw! Yaw! Hey, Pop! Pop! What's up, Brownie? Dick Summers told me to tell you to hide old rock. Mr. Tadlock's give orders to all the dogs in the train to be killed. Hank McBee's over behind that wagon doing the killing right now. No one's gonna shoot my dog, Brownie. What do you aim to do? Mr. Tadlock's captain. Here, take the reins, Brownie. I'm going to have a talk with McBee and Tadlock. Come on, Rock. Well, that's one less, Tadlock. I'll clean out the whole parcel of mongrels. Including Rock, McBee? I guess I'm going to have that pleasure, Lige. What you got against dogs, Tadlock? Oh, they're a nuisance. They slow up the train. They're always underfoot, make it hurt and lost, and cause delay. Anyway, they're sure to tip off any Indian camps we might run across. That ain't so, Tadlock. Stay out of this, Dick. You're only here as a hired guide. The dogs will tell us where the engines are quicker than they'll give us away. Well, it's no matter anyway. Dogs aren't any good to anybody. Step aside, Lige. You ain't gonna shoot my dog, McBee. It's rules. Who made them? I'm appointed to carry them out. Now step aside. Padlock, I'll draw from this here company and take them that have dogs with me. You better stop, McBee. The rule applies to everybody, Lige. McBee. Reckon maybe I ought to cut you down to size, McBee. Don't move, Lige. I don't want to have to shoot you. Now step aside. I got my duty to do. Put that gun down, McBee. You're not so dangerous without a rifle, McBee. 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 Swear I don't know why somebody ain't killed you. There wasn't any reason for you to bust in, Dick. I, I'd have made out. Oh, sure, sure. I just acted sudden like. Remember an old rock got me riled, I reckon. What are you going to do about my dog, Tadlock? Well, I'm going to suspend the rule against dogs until we can have another general meeting along the trail someplace. Is that satisfactory? It will be, if you change the rules. I'm running this train, Evans, and I'll give the orders. Watch out for the critters, Becky. I'm going to the rear and look at the stock. Oh, wait, Lige, wait. You don't have to do all the work. Can we talk a minute? What's wrong, Becky? You, you look sort of scared. I, I just wanted to talk is all. About what? Just talk. You ain't like yourself. You wore out, I bet. No, I'm all right. It's just the wind and all. You down in your mind? A little. There's no cause to be down. Things is fine. You just make yourself think things is fine, and sure enough, you'll see they are. That forever blowing wind. You know, I, I was just saying to myself, it's sure a nice day for travel. Lige, do you ever think of the home we left? No, honey. It ain't no use looking back. You think things will be all right now, sure enough, Lige. Slicker and grease, honey. Now, don't you fret yourself. All the train will corral. What's the trouble, Tadlock? Yeah, the women want to rest. Well, a little rest won't do no harm. Yeah, but it's holding up the train. That there Tadlock, he galls me. You were on his side. Yeah, I don't guess I'm for cutting him down. Not yet. Some of the men are here, and they say it ain't on account of his bossiness altogether. They say he talks hurry, but it's his critters that slow us up. Yeah, the longer he's captain, the mightier he gets. He's got his points, though. He tries hard. It ain't easy with some wanting to hurry and some wanting to hold back, some scared of Indians and some sorry they set out, and some just plain ornery. He won't last the trip, Lige. The uh, question is, who'd be better? You would. Me? <laughs> Are you crazy? You never did give yourself credit for what you could do. Why, you're getting crazy by the second one. I'm not cut out for a leader. You, I couldn't tell a man what to do. Imagine me making speeches to a flock of people. 
Bleachers come when it's needed, Lige. You know the right time. We're ready to roll again, Brownie. Time we get to the plat, we'll sure enough be on the real start to the mountains in Oregon. How far is the river, Pop? Be there by morning. What? Get out from under that wagon. There's nothing wrong with you. I guess I better stroll over and see what's eating Tadlock. I said get up and get going. I can't move, Tadlock. I'm, I'm sick. I hurt all over. There's nothing wrong with you, Martin. Let me get a look at him, Tadlock. Oh, there's no need for that, Lies. You can't be that sick. I reckon he knows better than we do. Now, look, we're going to roll out on time. Let's load him in a wagon and get going. Hey, Martin's got camp fever. What oh. difference does that make? Camp fever? Is it catch? No, no. All right, get back to your wagons, all of you. Get ready to pull out. Hold your horse, Tadlock. We aim to see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. right. Lige, put him in a wagon and we'll roll. Yeah. Don't know as we ought to. I'm the captain. I'll take the responsibility. We're all together, Tadlock, including Martin. What I aim to do is see that everybody's took care of proper. I ain't for jolting Martin along in a wagon. Don't be a fool. Grass is already short because of the buffalo. It'll be a darn sight shorter if we let the other companies get ahead. We ain't first anyhow. There's some ahead. A handful, if any. But because they're ahead, you think we can let everybody pass? Camp fever makes the bones ache bad. I'm in favor of staying here until we mo know Martin's better. We'll roll, do you hear? I say we'll roll. I ain't moving. I ain't. Hold on, everybody. We need to remember that the trick is to keep moving. It'll be late fall before we reach Oregon as it is. A man's life matters too, don't it, Tadlock? We can't hold up for one man. Tadlock, I don't reckon you're the man to tell us that. I say let's wait. That's right. I say now listen, wait. listen, everybody. Lige is trying to turn you against me. Is that the reward and thanks a man gets for looking out for your interests? Why, if I didn't push, you'd all be back in Missouri. Now get out of your wagons and let's get going. You can't talk your way to Oregon. Remember, Lige, I still have a few friends on this train. And you're losing them by the minute. You're pretty ambitious, aren't you, Lige? You want my job, don't you? Is that what you're trying to put over on the folks? Well, it won't get you anywhere. No. No, I ain't cut out for a captain. But one thing I do know is that Martin began this trip with us. He shared our dream. Well, he's as important as this whole train. The going's been rough, all right, but he's driven and plotted and pushed and tugged and helped turn the wheels. He's eaten dust with us. He's swam in sweat and he froze at night. He worked the sun up and he worked it down to keep rolling, just like all of us have done. And I say we owe it to him to wait for him to get better so as he can share the driving and the plodding and the pushing and tugging and the joy of the new land that's waiting for us all. And Tadlock... The people in this here train is going to have a meeting tonight. And we're going to unseat you. Yes, sirree. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of The Way West, starring Joel McRae. You know, when you buy greeting cards, they are never for yourself. You buy them only for others. You buy them to carry your friendliness, your sympathy, or appreciation, or affection to other people. This is why the makers of Hallmark cards consider the words on every greeting card so very important. They are aware there is no magic like the magic of words to reach the hearts of others. What power words have to deepen the affection of those you care for, to heighten their happiness on festive occasions, to strengthen ties of friendship. For every person, for every occasion, you will find Hallmark cards to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And every Hallmark card will speak also of your own good taste by its perfection in every detail of color and design and craftsmanship. That's why I'm sure if you were to ask any group of friends what name they think of in greeting cards when they want to send the very best, they will quickly answer Hallmark Cards. So it is easy to remember, it would be difficult to forget, to look for that Hallmark on the back of every card you choose, because you care enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of The Way West. Starring Joel McRae. July 
July 1845, the wagon train bound for Oregon reached the Red Butte Mountains under the leadership of Lige Evans, who had been elected captain. Weary and spent by the grueling months of travel, the great heart and courage of the pioneer group never wavered. Then suddenly, to add to their hardship, they were surrounded by buffalo, to the left of them, the right and ahead and behind, closing the train in and hoofing up dust that hung like a fog. It's the darnest country, Dick. Don't do nothing by halves. Either there ain't a buffalo or there's nothing but buffalo. Ever see a buffalo stampede line? No, and I don't like the notion of it. Wouldn't they shy off even from a train? Well, I couldn't tell you about that. It's funny about them buffalo calves. You wouldn't think they'd join up with us and follow tame cows. Sometimes what you gotta watch for is your own critters don't chase off with the buffalo. I got every man we can spare watching them. Howdy, Pop. Where's Rock, Brownie? Well, lamed himself a little, so I boosted him into the wagon. Sure looks like a storm coming up. Uh, maybe not. That cloud ain't hardly moved for an hour or more. Dick, which way are the buffalo likely to run? Well, I don't know as it makes any difference. Our cattle will likely run if a buffalo do. Yeah, well, I'm going to round up all the men. We're going to set fires beyond where the cattle is. Maybe that'll help if there's trouble. Come on with me, Brownie. <laughs> Stampede's over. We'll be able to save some of our stock. Is that you, Patch? Oh, right, Dick. Have you seen Lige? Well, he's right here. Oh, oh. Are you all right, Pa? Brownie. Brownie. I told Ma you'd make out. Dick come and stayed with us herders, and we rode wild trapping our stock. I swear it was fun. Fun? Fun, was it? What's the matter, Pa? I'll strap you for scaring the daylights out of me. Morning. Oh, you'll be all right, Becky. You know how boys are. they got to have a look at everything. Time don't mean nothing to them. Why is everyone behind their wagons toting guns? Why are you toting a gun, Lige? Now, don't be getting in the flutter. Oh. Cap your pieces, all of you. Right. Lige! Take it easy, Becky. Lige! Indians! Brownie's with them! Oh, Lige! Brownie! All on your face. We're going to blast them. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold your fire, Lige. Uh, Hold your up? fire. What's up, Dick? Them nabobs is from the Sioux. They don't savvy a word. Peaceable? Well, they won't rub you out except in fun. Where'd they get Brownie? Must have wandered into their party. You're going to have to trade with them to get him back. Well, get your pipe out and act to be loading it. That's peace sign. Can I take Brownie away from him now? Oh, let him stay. Ain't much risk now, Lige, as long as we're careful. Ain't nothing which an Indian's appetite like scalps to be took safe. Yeah, those red devils have got two of my horses. Some of men at the corral from the rear. I want them back right now. Oh, he ain't no bargaining position, Tadlock. I can't do very much, can I? You won't help me get him back? It ain't worth the gamble. Particularly when the horses aren't yours. You wouldn't stop to think that your boy caused the loss. I don't go along with you on that, but I'm willing to leave it to the council. If they decide against me, I'll make up the loss to you. Don't make me laugh. You run the council. You are the council. They'll kill me an Indian or two before this trip is over. No sense in killing one that didn't do you any wrong. One's like another. Tadlock, I'm peaceable, but it's getting hard to keep from twisting your neck. I'm waiting for you, lad. Now hold it, boys. No sense showing the Indians we're fooding. Might take it into their heads we're a soft mark and attack us somewhere along the trail. I'm going to get my horses right now, Lies. You going to try to stop me? I wouldn't be taking the lives of this here train in my hands if I was you, Tadlock. You're not worrying a mite about the lives of the people in this train. Your whole concern is your son. The rest of us can get scalped for all you care. I'm going to get my horses. You hear me? And at the same time, I'm going to hang an Indian who stole them. Stand right where you are. Don't make a move. Your guns don't frighten me. I don't need any guns. Guess maybe it'd be best, uh, the best interests of everybody if we settled our dispute once and for all. No, Lige. Too bad. It's got to be this way, Dick. 
I reckon the engines will smell a skunk. I'm going to get my horses back right after I whip you, Lige. And a whip man won't be captain of this train for long. Come on, let's go. You did what was need for Lige. Yeah. <gasps> now we can start trading with the Indians for brownie. across this river. Tide's too stiff. Floating wagon might draw the teams along with it. Horses will pull them across. Next! I'll follow you, Lang. I expect I'll take my wagon across last, Tadlock. I'll follow you. Well, there's no time to argue. You ride along with us, Dick. Okay, well. It ain't too far across, but this water's sure fuller. Deeper than you imagine. What are you waiting for, Tadlock? I'm right behind you. We're thinking. Don't worry, Becky. Just sit still. Horses will swim us across. Yeah! Yeah! I sure know how to cross a river. Well, in all the years I've been married to him, we've been able to spend near a river. Lead horses, oh. Slip. On your feet, Nellie. Yeah! Yeah! What you like? We got them for them motors. We got about 30 more feet to go. We'll make past them. Padlock! You're following too close. Watch the boulders! Take care of your own wagon. That ain't a bad idea. Yeah, Nelly. Yeah. This river is a fury. Uh, we're free of the boulders. We ain't got no trouble ahead. Headlock. Headlock's wagon's hit the rocks. The river's got him. Where are you going, Lodge? He's gone under. I better fish him out. Headlock's not worth it. Water is dangerous. He's a human. I gotta try. Oh. I don't see him. Ronnie, Ronnie, look after your mom. I'm going back here. There's Pop. He's got Tad Lodge by the hair. They're going under. Lodge! I'll go in the line. Here. Catch it, Lodge. Got it. Help me pull, Ronnie. Come on. Pull. 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 You all right, Lodge? Oh. When it is off, Tad Lodge's hurt bad. I, I, I suppose I, I have to thank you, Lodge. No call for that, Tadlock. Whatever is our trouble, you're you're still part of this train, and you count as much as anybody else. I I never thought I'd say it, but you're a you're a good captain, Lige. We're gonna hit Oregon together, Tadlock. We're not moving until you get well. She lies yonder, Willamette Valley. You're in Oregon. It's it's a mighty pretty sight, Dick. All that green grass prairie is shining in the sun. If a man must have roots in the soil of life, this is as good a place as any to plant them. Well, I reckon that's all right for you, Lodge. But my job's done. I'll be going back. Well, why don't you stay here with us? There's free land for you like everybody else. You could be an important man in Oregon. Well, it ain't important some after. What is it? Well, I'm bound to chase my tail, I reckon, like a pup. Your way's cut out, and it's a good way for you. But mine's different. What, don't it mean nothing for you, for Oregon to be America's? You and yours will tend to the future of America. And I'd say it was in mighty good hands. So long, Lyde. So long, partner. It couldn't be no other way for him. It's different for us. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon you're right, Becky. Grief bows the heart, but makes it richer. So joy will be richer. Yes, Becky. Yeah. Look out there, honey. We sweated and labored to get here, but that makes the getting sweeter. Yonder's all that rich soil waiting for the plow, waiting for the work of hands and the happy cries of children and the future of Brownie. We've rolled miles and left the dust behind, and we're just the first of many more who pay the price of hardship. 
cost was high, but it was worth it. No prize ever comes easy, Lash. This is your dream come true. I love you, Becky. Oh, Becky. Welcome home to Oregon. McRae and James Hilton will return in a moment. I learned a surprising fact the other day. A cousin whom I've always considered the most thoughtful person I know told me she has a very poor memory. Her secret is she doesn't trust it. She jots down everything she wants to remember in her Hallmark date book. Birthdays and anniversaries, names of new friends, ages of all her nieces and nephews, so she'll send them the right presents. No wonder she's so popular. Now, I'm sure that's just an example of the way many women use their Hallmark date books to make themselves more thoughtful people, more valued friends. This beautiful date book will remind you of everything you want to remember all year long. There's space for notations beside each day. Yet it's so cleverly arranged, it's small enough to slip into your handbag. You can carry it everywhere. And you can get your 1950 Hallmark date book absolutely free. A useful little present from the friendly store where you find Hallmark cards. Just stop in tomorrow and ask for yours. Here again is James Hilton. I think you'll agree with me that Joel McRae did a splendid job as Lige in A.B. Guthrie's story, The Way West. Mr. McRae, on behalf of all those who make Hallmark cards, I want to thank you for appearing with us tonight and for treating us to such an outstanding performance. Well, I, I never quite know how to respond to introductions or words of appreciation. I guess like your Hallmark cards, the best practice is to say the appropriate and ser- sincere thing, so... Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. We're always happy indeed to feel that we're carrying on in the Hallmark tradition. I hope I may be pardoned for being a bit proud, but the fact is that we like to establish firsts here at the Hallmark Playhouse. Tonight we had the first radio adaptation of The Way West, and this was your first visit with us, Joel McRae. This series of firsts is certainly in keeping with the traditions of the makers of Hallmark cards. Right, Mr. Hilton. What story have you selected for next week? Next week, we shall present our dramatization of that fascinating novel by Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days, a story whose very title takes us back through the years to an age when 80 days was almost incredibly fast for such a trip. The story concerns not only the journey, but a wager of a fortune. It's all very exciting, and I think one of the best things Jules Verne ever wrote. And to play the part of the adventurous traveler, we are fortunate indeed to have Ronald Coleman back at the Hallmark Playhouse. I hope you'll all be with us then for what promises to be a delightful evening around the world in 80 days starring Ronald Coleman. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday then, this is James Hilton saying good night. for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you carry enough to send the very best. Joel McRae is soon to be seen in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. The part of Rebecca was played by Miss Lorene Tuttle. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Ronald Coleman in Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days and the week following, Mary O'Hara's Green Grass of Wyoming starring Lon McAllister and the week after that, John Fanti's Wine of Youth on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri. Stay tuned for Earl Smith with the news following this announcement.